it was kind of crazy. He was, uh, he was doing my throat and he kept hitting me with the tattoo machine on my chin. It was electrocuting me at the same time. So I was just like, okay. Uh, but back then it was kind of funny. It was like, now I'll just be like, yo, dude, just make it as easy as possible. I, I can't get into like the numbing creams and stuff like that. So to me, it's like, you go get a tattoo, you get a tattoo. But uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not psyched to get a sit in that chair anymore, but I love the end result and I love the art form and I respect the artist uh, tremendously. My name is Michael Amoya. I am, um, I guess, an entrepreneur. I've been running businesses for the last 25 years. Uh, mostly in the entertainment space. I used to run a production company, produce TV shows, have a music publishing company right now. And, you know, kind of one of the reasons why I'm here is I have an NFT project that we're bridging the gap between tattoo culture and Web3, where we're actually tattooing PFP characters. We're not putting tattoos on people, we're actually putting tattoos on the little characters, the NFT characters from famous tattoo artists. I was born in Queens. I lived in Queens in Long Island. Childhood was definitely not the best for me. And the whole reason why you know, I have tattoos on me kind of is part of my story from my childhood. My whole body is covered in insect tattoos. And there's a reason why that is. You know, when I was a kid, besides all the struggles I went through, I also went through um, misdiagnosed with leukemia. I went through dialysis. Um, I didn't have leukemia. I actually was scared. Uh, I had these visuals of dying and bugs eating away at my body. And I kind of wanted to overcome my fears and just kind of put this as armor on my skin. And now it's funny because <clears throat> what used to torture me is actually power. You know, these insects actually have power. Long Island was like kind of an interesting tattoo culture. Back in the day, it was, uh, you know, Frank Romano ran a company called Da Vinci. Um, it was Mike Ledger was uh, back, back in Long Island. Um, you know, all the hardcore bands back then were getting tattoos. So it was kind of like in that scene. Um, I don't remember specifically the first time I actually saw one, but that's when I started to get enthralled with the culture. Um, and, you know, Mike Rubendahl at Kings Avenue Tattoo is the first person to put a needle to my skin. I got the mother ant tattooed on my forearm and she had babies, that's where it all started. Mike actually did my whole head too. Really back in the day, Mike, um, he was probably like, I don't wanna say, I don't wanna put words in his mouth, but maybe a little reluctant to tattoo my head or certain parts of my body. Cause I don't think he, I think he thought I wasn't really fully in at that moment. And then he was like, okay, you know, I'll do it for you. You know, because it was, um, it was, it was, Back then, it was, a, it was a code of ethics that you had to follow as a tattooer, and you couldn't just tattoo any parts of anybody's body or go over somebody's pieces of art unless you circle back with that original artist. So there was a lot of rules in the street culture of tattooing that he followed. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, he did my back, he did my arm, he did my head, he's done a bunch of a couple things on my face. I mean, I'm, you know, so honored to have his art on my body, for sure. When I first started getting tattooed, I know it was, uh, it, that was it, it was an addiction. I don't have a lot of vices, you know, for me it's like, I've done some stuff as a kid, but I was always like level-headed and, you know, didn't screw around with drugs too much and just got my head clear. Tattoos were like my vice and I was just like, couldn't, con I constantly looked at my empty skin. You know, anytime I would get a tattoo, I couldn't even see it anymore. I was like, okay, what else can I put, you know, in the empty skin? So yeah, right away, it was like, I had the, you know, the fix. You know, as soon as he tattooed me day one, I was like, all right, what else am I doing? I was an angry kid. I was, it was a uh, therapy for me. It was, it was fun. It was, it was like, uh, you know, cathartic um, at that moment in time. Now it's just a, a body piece that I'm trying to finish. You know, as I get older, it's like the last thing I want to do is sit in a tattoo chair and get drilled. But, um, you know, it's what it is. When I first started getting tattooed, I was, just entering into like the entertainment space, you know, I was doing engineering, you know, mixing other people's records and things like that. Mostly local bands, not really making a lot of money. Um, and then I started doing assistant editing in TV. So I was working the night shift, so nobody even saw me at night. So it was just like, you know, I was the, you know, the freakazoid coming in at night, you know, loading the media for the day shift. And then I would just be out the door when they come in. So it didn't matter at that time. In entertainment culture, they're more, you know, embracing this sort of, you know, art form as opposed to like traditional, like, you know, finance or any other sort of, you know, sector of business. So 
So it wasn't, you know, generally speaking, it was okay for me because I just put my head down and busted my ass. So as long as I worked and I added value to the person I was working with, nine times out of 10, it never really worked negatively against me. I'm into finance, you know, I do a lot of like angel investing and stuff like that too. And when I go into like these group meetings with a bunch of bankers, it's exciting to me because I am, I stand out. And it's important to stand out in a room when you're networking, right? Because I'm kind of an introvert and people will come up to me and talk to me. And then once they talk to me, they realize, okay, maybe uh, this person's in, you know, the business. So let's talk to them about maybe doing a deal together. So. Once I started doing that, it actually, it just, it, it just gave me more fire to learn more and to be more intelligent in the way I speak to people and not, you know, carry on the preconceived notion that people that are face tattooed are from prison or whatever. It was just like, you know, for me, it was just like, okay, I can show people a little bit of a different path. So it kind of motivated me to do that. So I was definitely, um, uh, it, it, that, that all worked to my advantage uh, for sure. So. So I just got the Guinness Book of World Records for the most insect tattoos on a person's body. We counted 889 bugs, but some of them didn't qualify for insects. So there's 864 insects, because some of them were arachnids. So my whole body's only covered in insect bug tattoos. That's it, there's nothing else. I, I look at what I've done to my body, like getting on an airplane. It's like, I'm in the air. It's like, my hands are with God at that point. So. For me, it's like thinking too deep about what I've done would just only take my mind into the wrong direction. I think that the one thing that nobody could ever say about me is I'm not myself and I'm not unique. And that's, to me, that's important, you know what I mean? I think everybody on this earth is unique in their own way and why not express that in the way that they want to express it without pushing it in people's face? And that's kind of like what I do. So, no, I don't think I have, generally speaking, I don't look back and regret it, no. But I can never really see the beauty of it. I kind of, if I go deep, I kind of see the horror of it because it kind of takes me back to a story. But, but it's funny because that story is actually uh, became my, you know, sole motivation. So yeah, if there's like uh, any sort of insect in this room crawling around, man, I'm not going to be psyched. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. To me, I just feel like I don't have enough, you know? It's like, I just feel like I need more and it's like, I don't feel like I'm, you know, heavily tattooed or, so, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's just a canvas to me, you know? It's a canvas of like a work in progress that I just continue to work on. Um, I don't do it for, you know, some people get them for different reasons, you know, whether it's a message from, from a loved one, they want to get a portrait or they just want to express themselves and act tough or whatever their reasons is surfaced or deep. But for me, it's just, you know, part of my makeup. So I don't, I don't know. I don't really think about it like that. And there's a lot of things I would change about, you know, instances that happen. But uh, my overall journey is my journey. You know, I, it's just a story. It's a building block. You know, anytime I do anything in life and in business, I, I'm not, you know, Part of my past life was fear. You know, now I'm like fearless, you know? So for me, it's like, when you go do something, just go do it and don't worry about failing. So I look at back at my past and I say, even if it's something I said, oh, I could have did it better, but look where I'm at now, you know? That's how I look at myself. So I'm always breaking myself down and always looking at, you know, I'm trying to stay in that zone. You know, I do focus a lot on uh, the negative aspects of my life and what I can improve. And that's what's gotten me here. So I try not to stay too deep into that all the time because it's kind of you know, self-deprecating and it's not really healthy. It gets dark. Yeah, it gets dark, but it gets constructive. Um, that's the thing too. I mean, a lot of people uh, generally, I hate to say a lot of people, there are some people that don't look at themselves at all, you know, and that's not healthy either. You know, you have to be very self-aware. So, but not to the point where you don't have any more confidence. Um, so I try to balance that out. Um, a little bit, but no, my, my life story is my life story and I appreciate it and I have a lot of layers to it. I mean, I can talk for hours about stuff and that's what's given me, like I said, that's the definition for me for privilege, which people don't understand. It's like my privilege is what my struggles is what's given me fire. And I think for youth culture, if you can let them know, like, you know, all these things that people are going through, it's like use that to your advantage and it becomes more powerful. Um, so I just always try to turn a negative into a positive and just to take it full circle back to your question. Yeah. So that's my story and 
I'm sticking with it and I'm moving forward from here. No rear view mirror.